happy to see all of you guys. We have over 100 people. I know this is a school day. Um, so definitely this is a really fun topic and super important for everyone as well. Uh, you know that you probably guessed or know already that this one kind of has to do with money. So Gabe is our speaker and he has been working on the financial um, education area for a long time, has given a lot of talks to kids. And he's actually gonna have a special performance at the end of this talk. <laughs> so you guys should definitely look forward to that. Um, I wanna have him introduce himself a bit more later on. I'm just gonna introduce myself. Um, you, Many of you probably know me already. I'm Jesse, uh, founder, uh, CEO of Create and Learn. And we're based in the Bay Area. Uh, very nice day here today. Um, with that, I'm gonna open this up and Gabe, it's all yours. All right, great, Jesse. Well, thank, thanks for the introduction. Uh, nice to meet everybody. I wish I could see all of your faces and hear all of your voices, but this isn't the platform for that. But uh, like Jesse said, my name is Gabe Bustos. I am the Education Director for Orders Academy. And Orders Academy teaches people of all ages, but uh, we started off teaching all young adults about how we can be smart with our money. And, you know, as, uh, as a young adult, it might not I, like, I know you all know that money is very important because we need it to buy things. But as you get older, you, you begin to learn that money is not just about buying things. Money is directly tied to how we can, uh, uh, how we interact with other people. So our friends and our family, how we can take care of our bodies and our brains. So our health and our mental health, and also how we are earning money each and every day, right? So it's not just about budgeting or banking or paychecks. But each and every day that you're out there working hard to earn money is a big part of your equation when it comes to being a healthy and happy person. Okay, so I'm going to show you just a couple slides here about us before we jump in. Today's class is all about budgeting and saving. We'll first be talking about how money is a lot like sports and how budgeting is like our head coach. Then we will play an activity called Lemonade Stand, which is really about saving for a rainy day. Then we'll play another activity called Budgeting Blocks which will teach us that making a plan can actually be pretty fun and doesn't have to be lame, like doing worksheets and homework. Not that doing worksheets and homework is that lame. Uh, uh, and then lastly, we'll open it up for Q&A, okay, for question and answer. So again, um, even as you get older, it's really important to work hard and to find important ways to um, be productive and act like an adult but it's also really important to maintain a playful and youthful spirit. So this is our team here at Ortis Academy. We're all pretty young and like to have a lot of fun, uh, especially when we talk about money. Uh, one, two other things that are important about us, not, not necessarily related to this class, but a lot of people teach money using just math. And of course, math is very important, but uh, money is a very emotional topic as well, right? Like, you can, you can know how much money you have, but still when you see an Instagram ad for something you really want, you still might buy it because you have a credit card and you can buy things even without money that you don't have, right? So money is a very, very emotional topic. And one thing that we do here at Ortis Academy that's different from a lot of other financial literacy educators is we talk about the social and emotional part of money that really influences a lot of our behaviors with money beyond just what we might know or read from a book, okay? And we, we do education for many, many different age levels. So today we'll be talking about stuff for young adults, which is called foundations, but we also do lots of education for adults and families, both for people needing to get financial stability, and, uh, so paying down debt, saving, developing healthy habits with spending and budgeting, but also for people that are looking for a little bit more to invest in stock market or invest in real estate to grow their wealth over time. All right, so let's jump into our first topic today. We're gonna to be talking about how budgeting, how, how ma uh, managing your money is very much like managing a team, being a head coach of a team. So I'm gonna stop sharing here for a minute and Jesse, I will ask if we can open up the chat, yes. So we'll put it in present mode, thank you. Um, I will ask if we can open up the chat because I like to think of money like, um, like sports, okay? And if we think about 
um, sports and we think about earning money is like our offense, our offensive strategy. So putting money in our bank account is like putting points on the scoreboard and um, defense is how we're managing the money that we have. Okay. So if we think about companies trying to sell us products, they're trying to play offense on us so they can earn money. And our defense is like us uh, being smart with how we're managing the money we have. Our budgeting is when we're making a plan that, that both meets our offense and our defense. So we're planning how much money we have coming in for the month and how we're going to be spending it. So let me ask you a couple of questions about, about being a head coach. If you're, if you're the head coach of a sports team, can you just make the same plan? Like say you start the season, you have your plan. Can you use the same plan for every game of the year? Can you use the exact same players, the exact same plan for every game of the year? No, right? Of course not. So in the chat box, what is something that could make your plan have to change, right? Say my team is playing Miss Jessie's team and my plan goes well this week, but next week I'm playing Miss Megan's team. What is something that might change my, that might force me to change my plan from this game to the next game? We got different strategies, okay. So maybe a different, each team you're playing against has a different strategy. So you have to come up with a different strategy to play against them. What else is something that could force you to change your plan as a coach? It says people, uh, maybe someone get injured. Exactly. Um, if, if someone learned your strategy already, exactly. you probably have to change. Um, differences in skills. Different skills, yep, injuries, exactly. Um, take advantage of your surroundings. So uh, budgeting works the exact same way, right? So say I have a plan for this month. Say, I, say I'm making $2,000 in my salary, right? And um, I'm going to spend $1,500, right? I would have $500 left over at the end of the month. But say I, my car gets a flat tire and I have to fix that, right? Now my plan has to change. Say I um, get a ticket, a parking ticket, and I have to pay that, right? Now my plan has to change. Say I earn extra money. Say I get somebody a babysitting gig or, or um, a way to earn some extra money. Now I can make my plan change in a positive way. So let me ask you this, everybody in the chat box, what are some things that could come up during the month that would make your plan change either for the worse or for the better? Yes. Okay. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah, maybe a car accident. Yep. A bonus, that's a good one. Bonus, yep. Yeah. That, uh, that might mean you can save more or invest more in the stock market. Stock market crash if you actually do stock market, yes. Yep, yeah. yeah. babysitting, you get a babysitting gig, a storm, exactly, a raise, car mods. Not sure how that changes your plan, but I like, I like the way you think. Lottery, all right, that could do it. You quit, right? You decide to quit your job. That would definitely change your plan. You get sick, flat tire, karma. All right, got some deep thinkers here. You get fired, exactly, right, exactly. When we think about budgeting, right, it's the same thing. We make a plan for the month, okay, that's the first part of it. We have to understand what our expenses are, what our income is coming in. We make a plan for the month, okay? Then we keep track of the score. <laughs> um, we keep track of the score. So, you know, maybe things go according to plan, maybe they don't, but we're keeping track. We make adjustments and then we make a new plan each week, right? So every week we're making a plan, we're keeping track, we're adjusting, okay? So very, very similar to budgeting. So I think it's really important to think about budgeting that way, right? Because uh, a lot of people get mistaken with budgeting that, um, I'm not sure how I disable annotation. It's okay, don't worry about it. I can disable okay. it, but I need to look for it. Uh, a lot of people get mistaken with budgeting because they think that budgeting is uh, means like it means no. It means that like you can't spend money on these on all these different things you want, right? But what I but budgeting actually when you're doing it effectively means that you're actually setting a plan that works for you, and it it, it allows you to say yes to the things that are actually important to you. Okay, so um, let's. Uh, let's play an activity. We're going to play a little activity called um, Lemonade Stand, all right? And 
it's it's a game where you will have to make a plan for how you're going to earn and spend money using a lemonade stand. Okay, so you'll have to select how many um, how many lemons you're going to buy, how much sugar, how much ice, how many cups. All right, and then that will determine how many cups of lemonade you can sell. And then you'll set a price for your for your lemonade. Now, if you price it too high, not not many people are going to want to buy it. If you price it too low, then you might sell a lot of cups, but you won't make enough money. So you have to think strategically about how you price your lemonade. All right, and we're going to play five days. You're going to run the lemonade stand simulation five times to see how much money you can earn as a profit. So the total amount of money you earn coming in minus the expenses you use to, to purchase your supplies. Okay, so it looks like this. Everyone can see you won't click anything. Don't click anything until the, the truck pops up. And then you'll select, it'll tell you six lemons equals one pitcher or 10, 10 cups of lemonade. Uh, in the top left corner here, you can click your money to see how much money you have in your bank and in cash. Okay, so I'm gonna select, I'll select 12 lemons that will allow me to sell 20 cups of lemonade to buy 12 lemons. Then sugar, it'll tell me one bag of sugar. I can sell 100 cups, we'll make 100 cups of lemonade. So I'm gonna buy one bag of sugar. Um, I can choose to buy how many cups and straws. So one box is $5 and that will allow me to sell 25 cups of lemonade. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to buy a couple bags of ice. Each bag of ice will let me sell 20 cups of lemonade. So I've chosen my supplies for day one, all right? Then it'll say, click here to set a price. Now I can set a price. How much do I wanna charge people? Now this, I can, I can select my price. So it'll tell me potential earnings if I sell all of the cups that I prepare. But just because I set a higher price does not mean I will sell all of those cups. Okay, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna choose, say I'll choose $3. Click this lemon to run the simulation. All right, it'll run that. And then at the end of the day, it'll tell me I sold uh, almost 15 cups of lemonade at $3 a piece. I earned $44. I, I couldn't quite sell all of, them, all of them. So I had to pour five cups out under a tree and then it'll break down my, my math for the day. So I earned $44 and 40 cents. My total expenses were almost $18, meaning my net profit or loss was $26.44, okay? I can choose how much I wanna put in the bank versus keeping cash. Uh, if you put it in the bank, you won't be able to spend it the next day. So I'm gonna make sure I've got some money to spend, okay? And then we're gonna run day two. So I don't have to click anything until the truck shows up. Truck shows up, there it is. And now I, I go day two by choosing what I wanna buy. Okay, cool. Yeah, why don't everyone, I'm gonna suggest that everyone um, try to play this. And then after day one, you can report your earning. And then after day two, you report your earning again. And, uh, and then tell us what you find out and what you're learning. Go ahead and play it. Okay, well, feel free to share your, how much you make or how much you learn, like lose per, per day. Day one, day two. Yay, someone made $15, someone made $42. Yay, someone made 36. Nice. 47, pretty good. Go ahead, Gabe. A couple of people were asking, how do you buy things? And, um, Ooh, someone did 120. That's pretty cool. Okay, Gabe, can you show them how to buy stuff again? I think a couple of people said they couldn't buy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the it's important to wait here. So I'll start it again. It's important to wait until the truck shows up. If you click, if you click anything before the truck shows up, like this opening soon, it'll it'll mess it up. So if you need to restart it, you can restart it. But once the truck shows up, then you can select with the arrows how much you wanna buy. So I select nine lemons, I click buy and, that, and that's what does it. Okay, for those of you who have finished one round and since you are waiting, try to change your way of buying and uh, selling and see if you can beat yourself, like beat your record on how much you make from your lemonade stand. So um, <clears throat> curious to hear, uh, Obviously, 
uh, one of the aspects of this game is to help you when you're when you're thinking about how you're going to run a business of a lemonade stand you're you're planning and forecasting how much money you're going to spend and how much money you're going to earn okay so um much of this is like running the business of your own life right each each month you make a salary and each month you have monthly expenses that you're going to have to spend just like the the cups and the sugar you're buying for your lemonade stand now obviously some days it rains uh how many of you actually that's not going to work um many of you may have heard of the term saving for a rainy day right which means that say you get into a car accident or you lose your job or a global pandemic hits and everyone shuts and everything for work shuts down right you have to save money for those days when you can't actually earn income or earn as much as you would like to. Okay, so that's one of our lessons here. No matter how great you're doing, everybody is susceptible, as we learned last year, everybody is susceptible to a rainy day. All right, many things are not in our control. So it's really, really, really important that as you all begin earning money, even doing chores, doing babysitting, doing things around the house, you start getting in the habit of saving a little bit of what away. Saving is really a habit. So whether you're saving $10 or $10,000, it's the same behavior, right? You're thinking I'm making money. Let me pay my future self first because I know it's going to rain one day. All right. And I want to put away money for, for that. Okay. So that's one of our lessons here. Now let's talk about what kind of expenses you might have as, as an adult, even, even as a young adult, right? I'm still in my twenties, but I still have many expenses that I have to pay for on my own. So um, Jesse, we can open up the chat here again, if you don't mind. And I'm curious to think about, or to hear what everyone has to say in terms of monthly expenses that we need to pay to have a family and to, or even if we don't have a family to just have a happy life. We've got house, rent, bills, water bill, what else, taxes, excellent food, electricity if there's a house fire yep then definitely have to pay for that food car okay even car you can break down car into a few different parts right you've got your car payment actually paying for the car what else comes with car insurance excellent what else what else do we pay for car pool mods excellent pets floods natural disasters excellent education can be expensive no doubt worth investing, worth investing in your own education. Definitely worth paying for education. Uh, medical, gas, lights, college. Excellent, excellent. A, great answer, love that. Bills, taxes, food, excellent, excellent. Okay, so now let's think about what do some of these things cost? Okay, so let's pause, pause in the chat. Let's think about uh, rent, all right? Now we're gonna get very different answers depending on where you live for rent, but Say, for example, uh, I'm over here in Baltimore on the East Coast. My apartment, I live by myself. My apartment has two bedrooms and then this main room and a little kitchen right here. What do you think I pay in rent each month? What do you think? Just take a guess. What do you think I pay to live in Baltimore City each month, two bedroom apartment by myself? $1,500, not a bad guess, pretty close. $2,000, too high, too high each month, each month. 1300 getting closer, getting closer. 1000. Uh, who is that? Jackson. I think that was Jackson. Jackson hit it, hit it right on the money. I paid nine. So it's $975 a month. Megan, you're probably laughing. Like that's crazy. Right. Uh, in that, that's in Baltimore right now, if you lived in, in Los Angeles, um, Jesse, I'll ask you, but, uh, what, what do you think it costs? Actually, uh, let, let me not ask you, Jesse, let me ask, uh, all, all of our students. What do you think two bedroom apartment by yourself in Los Angeles costs per month, per month? <laughs> Simone, nice. <laughs> uh, Jesse, you'll have to be my, I guess you're in San Francisco, but maybe Meg, uh, you'll have to be my, my correct answer here. I have no idea what it costs in Los Angeles to live for two bedroom apartment. I think Meg would know. Yeah, just let me know when you're ready for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sure you know what the answer is? Yeah, <laughs> pretty sure. $3,000, $2,000, $3,500, bruh. I don't know. 3000 3, is pretty close. 3000 is pretty close. So three times the price, right? But 
the jobs in Los Angeles pay a lot more, at least the same job might pay a lot more than it would in Baltimore. Okay, so again, rent is really going to fluctuate depending on what kind of place you're living in. If you have roommates that can lower it, what city you're living in. All right. What about uh, health insurance? What do you think it costs? Well, we'll use me as an example. So I, I said I was in my 20s. I'm actually 30. I just turned 30. Uh, what do you think it costs me per month in health insurance? I'm a pretty healthy guy, but stuff comes up every now and then. What do you think I pay per month in health insurance? $500, not bad. It's a little bit lower. Definitely more than zero, Simone. Oh, who's got that? Alexandra, $400, pretty much right on. Alexandra, Jason, good guess, $400, okay? So $400 a month that I'm paying in health insurance, that's not even if I don't get hurt, you just have to pay that anyways, okay? So great guess there. What about um, car payment, okay? I drive a 2011 Toyota Prius, that has, I bought it with, is, I bought it used. It had about uh, 30,000 miles. What do you think I pay per month for the car? Well, Wand, you are close with one of those guesses, uh, you, but make it to everyone in the chat. What do you think I pay per month for my car? We'll do car payment plus gas plus insurance, okay? So I'll give you a hint. My car payment is, um, well, I paid it off. It was $300. So $300 for car payment plus gas plus car insurance. How much do you think total? Who said 400? Simone, Simone is spot on. $400 I pay each month for car. So we've got $400 for health insurance, $400 for a car, $1,000 for rent. So we're already at $1,800 a month that it costs. And that's just for health insurance, car and rent. All right, so uh, I wanted to do that as an activity or as a warm up for another activity we're gonna play. Okay, so I'll put this one in the chat box as well. Let's see if I can do that to everyone. Okay, actually, before I do that, let me screen share and show it to you. Okay, so this game is called budget. It's called budget blocks. All right. Now, it doesn't work perfectly like the last game. We're not computer programmers, but we did get pretty far with our our novice programming skills. So what you're going to do here is you're going to select different choices for your lifestyle okay and based on the choices you select it's going to give you i'm not i'm actually not going to show you how it works because it will give it away but you'll make different choices for your lifestyle so how much will i save of my annual income i want to save 10 percent okay what kind of diet would i like to eat fast food cook most of my meals or I prefer to eat at restaurants so i'll choose i like to eat at restaurants what kind of home do I want to live in? Small apartment, house, luxury house, we'll say a small apartment. How much internet and uh, mobile uh, streaming do I, or data do I want? I'll say fast. Okay, this one, if you don't know what health insurance is, we talked about that, but you have to pay each month to cover yourself in case you get hurt. Otherwise, it'll be a lot more expensive. But if you pay a little bit each month, when you go to the hospital, it's more affordable. So depending on how much you choose to pay each month, means how much coverage you'll have if something bad happens. So I'm gonna select cover for all the major things. You'll select how you wanna get around town. I'm gonna to choose a used car and how much money I'm gonna spend on having fun, okay? And then once I do this, what's gonna happen is your choices will determine different size blocks you have and you have to try to make the blocks fit into the grid. It's kind of like Tetris, a little bit like Tetris. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this in the chat box and uh, I'm, I'm curious to, to see how you all do. Marcus, great question. <laughs> Marcus lives in Canada. Healthcare might be free in Canada. It's definitely not free in the United States. It's free in a lot of other countries. My family's from Argentina actually, and it's free in Argentina as well. So uh, Cindy, oh, right, nice. You got it to fit. Uh, Cindy, once you get to the grid, your goal is to try to fit all the blocks in the grid. Now you can pivot the rotation of the blocks like you can in Tetris. If you have two in there, it'll change them both at the same time. The game won't stop you from, from dropping them on top of each other. It won't say like you can't do that, but the goal is to try to make all the blocks fit in the spaces. So it won't block you from doing it, but that's how you, that's how you get it. And if, if, if you chose, if your lifestyle is too large, if you're living too large for your salary, you can, uh, you'll see a little, 
you'll see a little red restart button on the bottom left. You can click that and try again. Ooh, somebody has seven free spaces. Wow. You must have chosen all of the lowest lifestyle, which nothing wrong with that. Nice job, Sushrita. Sushrita. Three spaces free. Excellent. Mediums. Oh, interesting. And you still have some left. Are oh, you putting blocks on top of each other? So we're going to choose maximum fun. You all will see that we didn't make a choice on taxes because we have to pay taxes no matter what. All right. And then this is where you have to fit the blocks. So you do this. I'm going to put my housing there. Wow, I chose an expensive food diet, eating at restaurants all the time. It's very expensive. Uh, I'm going to do this, see if we can get that to work. That's pretty cool. And now I run out of space. Can't fit vehicle and fun. So <laughs> if I click this, this red button, it'll tell me. So this game, this budget is set up for a salary of $40,000 a year. But based on my choices, I need to make at least $4,400, for, or excuse me, $44,400 a year to afford that lifestyle. Okay, so. A lifestyle I've chosen does not fit the budget, the, my salary in this game. I could make more money or I could alter my lifestyle. Excellent, Jason, excellent. Ali, so hard. Life, is, life can be hard. It's hard to do this stuff in real life too. That's why, that's why it's important y'all are learning this early. I thought I could cook my own food. Cooking your own food is great. Somebody just messaged me. Uh, cooking your own food is a great way to save money, be healthy have a good hobby. Do you have to, somebody asked me, do you have to pay taxes for everything you buy in the United States? There is a sales tax for everything. You also pay taxes. The main taxes come from your salary, your income. So even if you have a salary or if you're your own boss, if you're, if you run your own business or you're an independent contractor doing freelancing work for different people, you still pay taxes. I think, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, I can play a song if, if y'all want to hear a song at the end. Okay. So the lemonade Dan said that there's not enough inventory. What does that even mean? Um, there there's, there's not enough inventory. What does that inventory mean? Oh, 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 inventory. Thank you, thank you. Great question, Marina, great question. Inventory is how many finished products you have to sell. So if you're a shoe company, it's not the supplies that make the shoes. It's how many completed shoes you have ready to sell. So in the, in the example of our lemonade stand, if you didn't buy enough supplies to make enough cups, then it'll say you don't have enough inventory because you ran out of lemonade to sell. For the bill, for the build, for the budget building blocks game, uh, why are taxes so big when they're only just a little bit of the bills that you pay? Good question. Suhan, good question. So, uh, so for most people in the United States, uh, if you're making over forty thousand dollars, forty-two thousand uh, dollars, you're going to be paying at least twenty percent taxes, fifteen to twenty percent taxes. Again, like I said to somebody before, if you run your own business, you can get that number a little bit lower, that percentage lower. But for most people, if you're above making, if your salary is above $42,000, you're going to be paying about 20 to 22% taxes. So if you think about it on a $40,000 salary, 20% of $40,000 is uh, six, no, eight, $8,000, right? One fifth of, of $40,000, $8,000, which is not small. I mean, that's a, it's a very substantial bill. What the, to answer your question as to why is that the case? Again, um, that's a complicated answer. The, the short answer is that when we pay taxes, it helps to fund things like schools and roads and the police department and the, um, you know, the public utilities, things like that. How do you keep track of when you pay the bills and how do you pay the bills? Yeah, great question. Ray Wan, Ray Wend. All right. Hope I hope I'm saying it right. Um, great question. Great question. So um, there's there's a couple things you can do. One, uh, I don't know if you all use like a calendar, like a, a digital calendar, like Google Calendar or the Microsoft Calendar, things like that. 
you can set automated reminders, right? So, so like I know that my rent and utilities are due on the first of every month. So I have a Google calendar where I just say, you know, three days before the first of the month, it'll give me a, send me an email and send me a notification that says these bills are due. I have a couple bills that are due in the middle of the month and I get a reminder for that. So that's really important. The other thing I do is I use a spreadsheet. I use a simple like Excel sheet basically. And um, that just has my bills that I have to pay when they're due and what amount is due. So I can keep track of it that way. And to actually pay your bills, it's gotten a lot easier. You used to have to mail in checks in the mail. And now you just log on to a website. Many places just have a website where you can pay your bill. So for example, my electric bill right here in Baltimore, there's, a, there's a, like the electric company that you just log on to the electric company. You can link your bank account. So you just say, it'll say your bill is $83. And I just say, okay, I want to, my bank account is safely linked. I say, I want to pay that bill. I click, you know, verify a couple times and then it gets paid off. So it's all electronic, which is good because it's helpful. It's easy. It's convenient. But as we all are learning, electronic money can also be confusing because it almost feels like monopoly money. Like if you have, you know, $200 in Venmo or you have $200 in Bitcoin or Dogecoin, right? Is it real money? Yes, but it doesn't feel like real money. So it can get pretty confusing. Anyways, that was a, I, that was a little bit of a side tangent. Great question. The answer is you can use automatic bill pay online to pay your bills, use technology like Google Calendar and Microsoft Excel to remind you how much to pay and when. So my questions are uh, one, uh, is there like a specific amount of tax that I have to pay if, for example, I'm buying uh, five kilos of apples or five pounds of apples. And uh, my second question is, uh, let's say that I buy a million dollar house and my neighbor also has a million dollar house. Do we pay the same taxes or are my taxes going to be higher or lower? It depends on the terrain that I'm on or how big is my house. Great, great questions, Lauren, too. Uh, First off, I'd love to hear why you're buying five kilograms of apples, but uh, uh, regardless, um, yes, if you're, well, I don't know, are you in, are you in Canada? Or I'm, I'm just going to answer, I don't know the rules in Canada, but in the United States, there's a sales tax on everything you buy. Um, if you buy them from a farmer's market, maybe you don't have to pay tax, but if you buy them from a grocery store, you'll be paying a 6% sales tax on everything you buy, apples included. And then to your second question, house uh, property taxes are evaluated based on the property value and the location. So if your house is worth a million dollars and the house right next to you is also worth a million dollars, very, very likely, as long as they're valued the same, that you'll be paying the same amount in property taxes. However, if I have a million dollar house here in Baltimore and Jesse has a million dollar house in Los Angeles, our taxes will be different because the property taxes in Baltimore are different than they are in Los Angeles. Now, if Jesse had a million dollar house in Los Angeles and I had a half a million dollar house in Baltimore, uh, excuse me, in Los Angeles, so same location, different value, it'll be a different tax. So if it's the same, same location, same value, the property taxes will be the same. Pretty good question. Yes. So my question is that when you like buy a car, and like you get into a car crash and you don't have enough money to pay for like insur insurance and stuff, what would you do? Yeah, yeah good. That's a great question, uh, Ali. So um, essentially you'll end up having to take, take off, take down debt, right? So credit cards are a form, like we didn't get into credit cards tonight, but uh, you can put it on a credit card in which case, if you can't pay it off at the end of the month, then it carries over into the next month's, meaning you have debt. Jordan said or to me directly, you can take out a loan. So you can get a personal loan to pay that, which is basically the same thing as a credit card, but just a little bit different. Um, you can borrow money from somebody else, right? Uh, you can get money in a variety of different ways, but any, any way you look at it, if you can't afford the payment, you're gonna have to take on some kind of debt that you'll have to pay back at a later date 
and with interest attached. So if I borrow, say, $1,000 from the bank or Jesse, they won't just give me $1,000 just straight up. They'll say, we'll give you $1,000 for a year. But after the year is over, you have to pay back the $1,000 plus a little bit extra, which is called interest. All right. Well, that's great. Um, good questions from everyone. Um, I'm open up the chat. So I love, love to hear from everyone. What do you think um, is, well, tell us a couple of things that you learned today. You can send it to everyone um, or you can send it to me or Gabe. Um, someone says how to waste and not waste money. Okay, that's cool. Tell us something. Everything is so expensive. Yep, so Shreetha asked me a great question personally. She's, or I'm not sure if it's a, a, a boy or girl. So I apologize there, but they said, um, what are some tips to live a healthy and balanced lifestyle where you're not high in debt and you're not worried? And I said, wow, great question. I'm not sure I can answer that in this chat box. But what I said to them, and I want to say to everybody is to keep getting educated, keep learning new skills, keep meeting new people. People are the best way to learn, right? So if you, you can learn from books and YouTube and all that stuff, and that's great. But other people who are more experienced than you are the best way to learn. So at your age, the best thing you can do is just keep, keep learning and growing and asking questions, finding, following your curiosity, and you'll find ways to keep growing in the ways that are meaningful to you. All right, let me get my guitar. I love it. Someone said, I really owe my parents. Yes, yes. <laughs> definitely for sure. We're as a kids, we were all getting it for free. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So, um, okay. So if we were all together in the same room, I would ask you to sing along with me. Um, it, the, the, the sing along part goes, um, so I'll, I'll sing you one verse and then I'll stop and then I'll play the whole song so you can hear the sing along. So it goes, um, the best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and the bees. I want some money. That's what I want. I need some money. That's what I want. So the background vocals go, that's what I want. All right. So if you're with me, I mean, uh, at home, you can sing along with me. Unfortunately, we can't unmute it. But here we go. All right. The best things in life are free. But you can give them to the birds and the bees. That's what I want. What I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. What I want. Your love gives me such a thrill. But your love won't. That's what I got. That was awesome. Right, you. Have you thought about a second career in singing? This, this is my second career. I tried to make it as a professional musician. It didn't work out. So okay. I switched to education. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you again, Gabe. That was awesome. Really good questions and engagement from everyone as well. You guys did an awesome job. Um, so with that, um, I want to thank you everyone again for joining us today. And you guys did an awesome job asking questions, engaging. And Gabe, thank you again for a fantastic talk. Uh, that was really awesome. Thank you. No, thanks for having us. Thanks for all the compliments, everybody. Great questions.
And then, yeah, Jesse, we've got a lot more education and games like that. So if, if anybody wants to learn more about what we do, so, you know, please share that. Awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely share the links uh, to your website as well as the games to the community who people like sign up for the classes today. Sounds awesome. Good. Good. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have fun. Bye.